Hello students, I'm Dr. Mike Christiansen and I have the great privilege of being your general chemistry teacher this semester. <laughs> well, welcome to class, or at least to this video. It's great to have you. I apologize for canceling our first day of class. I'm busy doing some stuff. Anyway, to make up for it, I filmed this video in which I'll cover all the same information that I would normally cover in a first day's lecture except it just won't be in person. And don't worry, our class will not be canceled Wednesday, so please be sure to come. And for those of you who are in the accompanying lab, Chem 1215, we will also hold it on Wednesday as scheduled. Chemistry sometimes intimidates people. If you happen to be one of them, let me offer you some comforting words. If you put in the necessary time into this class, I can almost guarantee that you will do well. I mean, I can't completely guarantee it, I mean, after all, I don't have a crystal ball or anything, but I promise that you don't have to be some kind of crazy chemistry genius to do well in this class. You just have to put in the time. Now, this brings me to a cute little equation that I invented. And from my years of experience, I personally believe it to be true. And that equation is the following. Success equals smarts times work. Okay, I realize that it's almost impossible to actually generate real numbers to represent success, smarts, and work. But I still believe that the underlying principle outlined by this equation is accurate. I've crossed paths with so many people who think, oh, I'm not a super genius. I can never be successful in science. That is absolute nonsense. When I first took chemistry, I was not by any measure the smartest person in the room. I remember meeting geniuses who could almost just sniff the textbook and suddenly understand and remember everything inside it. But I had to study really, really hard for a very long time and still rarely ever got the highest grade in the class. Now in time I learned a valuable lesson. I could get any grade that I wanted in class, even ones where the professor was horrible, the tests were crazy difficult, and the content seemed beyond confusing by doing one simple thing. Increasing my amount of work. Now, though I didn't have a lot of control over my natural smarts, this part of the equation, though I do believe you can increase or decrease that term as well, I realized that I had absolute control over the amount of work that I put in. How? Well, around my second year of college, I also figured out this equation, that work ultimately is the product of effort and time. Now, before I understood these concepts, I would get a bad grade on an exam and I would think, oh, that professor's a jerk. His exams are so long or hard, or that professor's classes are boring and he doesn't test on what's in the book, or his exams didn't cover what he said in class. Now, once I did finally understand these two equations, the quality of the professor became much less relevant. Once again, I realized that I could get any grade that I wanted in class, regardless of how good or bad the professor was, as long as I put in the amount of time. So, how much time did I put in? Well, that varied depending on the class. When I took advanced Spanish debate, for example, I didn't have to put in that much time. But when I took junior level genetics, I had to put in much more. Now I'll get off my soapbox and do some housekeeping stuff. If you go to USU's Canvas login screen shown here, and then log in using your A number and password, it may of course take you to a screen like this, from where you'll have to click the Canvas link. It will ultimately take you to a page that looks like this. If you go up here, it'll show you your list of courses, and you can click on this course, which is Chem 1210. This is our class's Canvas homepage. As you can see here, you can click on this link to get a copy of our syllabus, and on this link to get a copy of our schedule, which I'll review momentarily. And if you click on this link, you'll be taken to this page that has all the information that you need for Chapter 1. For example, you can get access to my lecture PowerPoints in both PDF and PowerPoint formats, as well as a PDF copy of our problem set. As you scroll down, you'll see that there are links to my YouTube videos for this chapter. Your assignment for this week is to watch these videos at home. Now granted, they're a little bit long and I apologize for that. Don't worry, the videos will get shorter as time goes on. All right, let's take a look at our syllabus. As I mentioned already, my name is Dr. Mike Christiansen, but I really don't like to be called doctor or professor. For me, they sound way too pretentious. You guys can just call me Mike instead. As you can see at the top of our syllabus, I've got all my contact information, including my personal and office phone numbers. Please contact me regularly by email at this email address, not through Canvas email because I don't check it very often. If you email me at this email address, I'll respond very, very quickly. 
Also, please feel free to call me at any of these three numbers anytime you want, night or day, if you really have questions. As we scroll down the syllabus, you'll see a lot of important things. For instance, I haven't yet determined my office hours. We'll do that by popular vote on Wednesday. I have, of course, a link to the Canvas homepage that I already showed you and a list of our required text and an optional solutions text if you wish. This is a list of the prerequisites for this course as well as a course description. This course is of course the first of two semester sequence covering basic chemistry. The principles covered in this course include unit conversion principles of measurement, atomic theory, and all of this other stuff listed here. I have to pause here to point out something unique about our course structure. It's very different from that of most classes. This course will not follow a traditional lecture format. Instead, lectures will be pre-recorded and posted on Canvas. You are required to watch each chapter's lecture video before the designated class period, which is shown on our course schedule. In class time, we'll be spent doing problem sets in groups. The groups, which will be assigned to you by me, may be modified by me once or twice during the semester at my discretion. You will do your problem sets together in your groups. These problem sets will be designed by me and made available on Canvas. Most problem sets will require more than one class period to complete. The due date for each one is listed at the top of the problem set on the course schedule. It also includes instructions on how to turn them in properly, which you will do by submitting them through Canvas. Each problem set is worth 10 points. Everyone in your group will receive the same score, so it's in your best interest to participate. Your lowest problem set score will be dropped. Now this type of course structure where you watch lecture videos online outside of class and then do traditional homework in class is called flipped or inverted teaching. Because you do your problem sets in class with the instructor present, the instructor is right there to help you answer all the questions that you have in person right when you need me the most. The exams which constitute a major portion of your grade are significantly based on the problem sets. Now I will post the answer keys to each problem set the morning after it's been handed in. Now to encourage participation and discourage freeloading, at the end of each semester, Every member of your group will anonymously assign a grade to all the other members of your group, including you, based on individual contribution to your problem set work. Your individual problem set score will then be readjusted to reflect the collective grade that you receive from all of your group members according to the equation shown here. So what this means is if your group, for example, got 90% of all the possible points on your problem sets, and then all of your peers and you yourself assigned you an average group peer grade of a C, then I will take that 90% and I will multiply it by 0.75 as indicated here, and that will be your new individual grade. Thus, each individual group member will receive an individual grade that will reflect how much he or she contributed to the overall group work. That, once again, is designed to incentivize you to make sure you come to class and contribute to your problem sets. As we scroll further down the syllabus, you can see the lecture times, a note to check Canvas regularly, and a list of the course objectives. Here are the course objectives. By the end of the semester, you should understand the basic principles of general chemistry as described above. When I say above, I'm talking about this paragraph right here. You should also be able to explain basic everyday chemical phenomena and apply this knowledge to solving real world problems and you should be able to explain why chemistry is important and how it applies to everyday life. Now, each of these objectives corresponds to an IDEA or IDEA objective, which is the system that USU uses for course evaluations. I'll post a document on Canvas connecting each of these courses to their corresponding IDEA objectives in case you're interested. In this class, your primary homework assignment is to watch the video lectures outside of class. Now, if you wish to do additional problems from the text, which is recommended but not required, I'll also post a list of suggested chapter problems from your text on Canvas. Beyond this, I have one more assignment for you. You are required to take an entrance exam that's worth 30 points, for which you'll get full credit regardless of how you do on it. The purpose of this entrance exam is to provide you a measure of how much you learn over the course of your two semester sequence here in Chem 1210, fall by 1220 next semester. Now, for those of you who don't take 1220, you're still required to take this exam, I'm sorry. Over the course of this semester, there will be 12 take home problem sets, one for each chapter as indicated on our class schedule. These are due usually two to three class periods after being assigned according to the schedule. You may of course use any resource you want to do them, including your notes, textbook, the internet, your fellow group members, and me. However, I warn you against mindlessly copying answers from your peers. Doing so will only disadvantage you and will likely cause poor exam performance. Not to mention affect the peer grade that you receive from your fellow group members. 
Now we'll talk about exams. In this semester, you'll receive four midterm exams and one comprehensive final. Exams will not be taken in groups. Sorry. <laughs> exams will cover information from lecture and or class and will include modified problems from the text and or in-class problem sets. The comprehensive final will have questions from old exams and quizzes as well as new comprehensive questions. Exams will be given on the days indicated on the class schedule, which is also posted on Canvas. If you know ahead of time that you're going to miss an exam date and if the reason is valid, determine that my discretion arrangements will be made. No after the fact excuses or absences will be considered. The only valid excuses that I consider for missing exam are extraordinarily unusual circumstances that involve generally death or something extremely horrible. If you know in advance you're going to have a schedule conflict, please tell me in advance so that I can determine whether or not it's actually valid. If, however, you have some crazy emergency like a car accident or a death or something that inhibits you from being able to take your exam on time or from being able to notify me in advance, and I understand that crazy emergencies aren't usually scheduled in advance, please notify me as soon as possible afterward. Here's how your grade will break down. The entrance exam is once again worth 30 points or roughly 5.5% of your overall grade. 12 problem sets with the lowest one being dropped is worth 110 points. Four midterm exams with the lowest one being dropped is worth 300 points and a conference of finals worth 100 points for a total of 540 points. Your final grade breakdown, the percentage of points that you receive of the total 540 will be given a letter grade as shown here by university policy. As I mentioned earlier, you should expect to put in a large amount of time into chemistry. I understand you all have lives, and you all have other things that occupy your time. But the fact is, there is no way to learn chemistry well without putting in the time. Unless you're one of those super geniuses. So I expect you to put in the time. And I pledge to you that I will put in all the time possible that I can as your instructor into teaching you well. We now go into a list of university policies. This paragraph talks about the withdrawal policy and I grade policies. This paragraph talks about students with disabilities. If you are such a student, please contact the DRC or Disability Resource Center as soon as possible, available at this phone number. This section talks about academic integrity and dishonesty. And this section talks about the grievance process. If you feel that you've been mistreated by me, you can read the student grievance policy found on pages 25 through 30 of this link and file a grievance properly. This paragraph talks about sexual harassment and this paragraph talks about student civility. I'm not gonna read you any of these latter paragraphs but do require you to read them yourselves and then sign the bottom of the syllabus and turn it into me sometime during the first or second weeks of class. Now that we've done all that, let's take a look at our schedule. As noted, on August 25th, there is no class. I do, however, require you to watch this video that you should be watching now and to begin watching the lecture videos that I've posted on our Chapter 1 homepage on Canvas. You can also begin working on your problem set if you wish to give you a good head start prior to working on them in your groups. Problem set 1, incidentally, is due on the 4th, which is the Thursday of week 2. You'll notice that on Wednesday the 27th, we will continue working on chapter one problem set. The entrance exam will open that day and you will take it in your respective testing centers. You can take it any day you want through and including September 12th, as indicated here. The instructions for that entrance exam are posted on a link on Canvas, located right here. There's no class on September 1st because of Labor Day. We'll begin talking about chapter two on the third. On the third, we'll begin working on problem set two in class. You should have watched the chapter two videos before coming into class on the third. Please budget your time accordingly. The schedule continues as delineated here. You should note that exam one, which will cover chapters one and two, will open up on the 16th of September. As with our entrance exam and all of the other exams, you can take it any day you want inside that window or the indicated windows for each exam in your respective testing centers. If you have any concerns or difficulties, please let me know. The conference of final will be taken any day that you wish during finals week, whose dates are indicated here. We will have a comprehensive review on the last day of class before finals week, in which I will prep a review session, and if you want to, you can bring any questions that you have prior to class. Now, the most common question that students ask me is, what's the best way to prepare for exams? Now, let's be honest, when a student asks this, what he or she is really asking is, tell us exactly what's going to be on the exam so that we can just study that and not study or learn anything else beyond exactly what we need to know for the exam. 
I, I know that because I was an undergrad too, and that's totally what I really meant when I asked that. Now rest assured, I understand that you have tons of things on your plate that you have to worry about. For every single exam, I will prepare and post in advance an exam study guide that will be made available to you on Canvas. On that study guide, I list exactly the concepts that you need to know, and I will connect them to some example problems from your problem sets. That way you don't go off studying things that aren't relevant for the exam. And trust me, the study guides are pretty darn good. If you use them and learn the principles outlined in them, you will do well on the exams. Now I have to pause here to point out a few things about this flip teaching format because I've been doing it for about two and a half years now. First of all, when compared to a traditional lecture format, I found that in my flip taught classes, the total overall amount of lecture time, if you actually count the number of minutes you have to spend listening to lecture, decreases by about 56 to 62 percent. It has a disadvantage of the fact that you can't ask a video recording a question, which means that when you watch your lectures at home, I advise you to take notes and especially write down questions that you might have that you can ask me in class. Furthermore, the average student grades go up by about 5% on both problem sets and exams flipped versus traditional lecture. Furthermore, my students have performed very well on national normalized chemistry exams, much higher as a class than the average national percentile. And finally, flip teaching takes about two and a half times as much prep time for me, the instructor, which doesn't really concern you, the student, but I just want you to know how committed I am. I do it because I absolutely love teaching and want to deliver this course in the best way that I possibly can. And I believe that flip teaching really is awesome. The first time that I flip taught a course, I conducted an anonymous survey at both week five and week 15 of the course in which I asked students to tell me how much they agreed or disagreed with this statement. I prefer the new flip teaching model to traditional lecture style. At week five, the students responded on average at 3.83, which means that they more or less liked flip teaching about as much as traditional lecture. By week 15, however, their average response number was 4.67. This means that by the end of the semester, they almost universally strongly preferred flip teaching to traditional lecture. So why in the world did they not like it as much at week five and then strongly preferred it by the end of the semester? There might be a couple of reasons, but I think that the major ones are housed in these comments. One student anonymously said, I really like the flip teaching method. At first, it seemed a little bit overwhelming, but now I feel like I have more time. Since I've learned to use the flip teaching method a little better, I feel like I actually learn more because I can stop and really absorb what I'm being taught and then move forward at my own pace. Yes, you can pause and slow down the videos if you want. Another student said, in the last evaluation, I wasn't sure how much I liked the flip teaching method, but now I prefer it and wish some of my other classes would do the same model for teaching. Like I said before, it's hard to get used to, but a very good method of learning. In other words, if you haven't been taught using this method before, it might take some getting used to, but once you get past that initial getting used to period and really harness the power of flip format, most people end up strongly preferring it. You can see that in these various examples of positive comments that were given to me anonymously by students who've experienced my flip classes, both two years ago and since. I'm not gonna read them to you, but you're welcome to pause and read them yourself if you wish. Here are some others. So that's the end of our intro lecture today. I hope it's been fun for you. Remember your homework is to watch the chapter one videos and go ahead and get started looking at your problem set one questions, which we'll tackle of course in class in your groups on Wednesday. Until then, have an enjoyable rest of your day.